Greetings, beautiful people. This is SB Favor Thinking Podcast, and my name is SB Favor. How are you doing today? It is Friday, March 5th, 2021. Another wonderful day and another day to be thankful. I hope everyone is having a good day, and I hope that you are focusing on what is good because, as I always say, if you focus on what is good, then you can project something good to happen. So, focus on what is good. If you are out there traveling about, make sure that you are wearing your mask and using your hand sanitizer. We all have to do our part during this pandemic to keep ourselves safe. So, please use your hand sanitizer and keep that social distance, keep yourself safe, and keep your family members safe. My guest today is an award-winning professional speaker and author of 30 plus books, including The Healing Power of Humor, You Can't Ruin My Day, and Embracing Life After Loss. And his name is Alan Klein. Hello, Mr. Klein. How are you doing tonight? I am terrific. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me on this episode of the podcast. And um, I would like to ask you, um, what inspired you to start writing books? Well, it started, um, I guess some people would call it a tragedy. My wife, at the age of 31, found out that she had a terminal illness, a rare liver disease called Mm -hmm. primary biliary cirrhosis. Mm -hmm. Basically, her liver wasn't working. And she passed away three years later, but she had a great sense of humor and continued to use it during those years. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a lot of tears, but there was always some laughter there. And I realized after she passed, that it was the laughter that helped us, even momentarily, just rise above the situation. You know, get a little reprieve. Um, you know, get a little distance from what was happening. Give us a breather. Mm-hmm. And after she died, I went back to school to to um, find out more about um, loss and death mm-hmm. and grief because I had never had anyone that close to me pass away. Mm-hmm. And, um, I went and it was a time Norman Cousins was talking about healing himself of a rare disease mm-hmm. with humor. And I remember my wife's sense of humor and I thought, um, I need to start writing about this, but I, I, first went back to school to get a master's degree in human, mm-hmm. H-U-M-A-N, um, and and I saw part of my master's was doing research on therapeutic humor. Okay. And so it was my wife's passing that really was the impetus of why I got into therapeutic humor. And the interesting thing about it, Shrey, is that mm-hmm. part part of doing that was to getting up and giving talks about it, and I became a professional speaker and went to hospitals and hospices talking about therapeutic humor, but to me, the interesting part about that was I almost failed speech in college. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so to get up in front of a group was so threatening, so scary for me, but mm-hmm. I got over it and I realized I'm really there to um, kind of give a message to other people that therapeutic humor could help us get through any situation, even the loss of a loved one. That's really, really, really beautiful because laughter is like medicine, the Bible says, and um, your story is um, awesome and I, I'm, I'm so glad that you are here because people need to know that they can overcome anything. They need to know that um, they are not alone. We all have a story, and and, and your story is a, a a healing, a story of healing. So tell me, right. uh, tell me about um, the book, the the healing power of humor. Tell me about that. Well. Um... First of all, I was told you can't get a book published, <laughs> that nobody will buy the book, mm-hmm. that there's uh, at that time 40,000 books written every year, mm-hmm. you're not going to find an agent. 
Um, and I don't believe in listening to other people. So I wrote a proposal and I got an agent and we did get, third, I think it was 12 rejects, but the 13th um, mm-hmm. publisher said yes. And it, w- it was Tatcha, which is now Tatcha Putnam Penguin. So it's a big publisher. The book is now in a 40 plus printing and a ninth foreign language translation. And it basically has, uh, I call tools, tips and techniques of how people could get more humor uh, in their life and lighten up, particularly about maybe serious things. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so that in a nutshell is kind of about the book and there's yes. various, there's 14 techniques of how to do that. Um, you know, like getting some props, mm-hmm. uh, some affirmations about humor, yes. some play, uh, various techniques of how to get more laughter, lightness, and humor in your life. That's beautiful. Tell me about You Can't Ruin My Day. That sounds like my kind of book. <laughs> <laughs> but I love the way that book came about. But, you know, the first one was my wife died and I wanted to share my experience of how humor helped. This one, I was not thinking about writing this book, but I was going to the gym every Saturday, and one Saturday morning, I was driving to the gym. I had just seen a Broadway show. I'm a big fan of Broadway shows, and I'd seen Billy Elliot, Mm -hmm. and I'm listening to the show on the tape deck, and I'm real happy, and suddenly on the roadway, the speed changed from 45 miles an hour to 25, I did not pay attention, and I was being pulled over for a ticket. Oh, wow. Mm. (laughs) And I got the ticket, and I got to the gym, and I'm still singing songs from the show, and I'm pretty happy. And my fellow gym mates are saying, Alan, how can you be so happy? Because I told them I just got a ticket. Mm -hmm. They said, you just got a ticket. Mm -hmm. And out of my mouth straight came these words. I'm not going to let that policeman or that ticket ruin my day. All right. And I realize how often we let other people Mm -hmm. and other situations ruin our day. Mm -hmm. And so we can take charge. Yes. You know, we can, we can see things differently and uh, we have choice um, in anything. And so I started to write this book and put together Oh, I don't know how many, 52 ways that people can um, turn any situation around and not let it ruin their day. That's awesome. You know, when I think about that title, it just makes me think about how um, it's a it's a choice right in the middle of that situation. Anything that's going on that tries to ruin your day, we have a choice to decide, right? Oh, all the time. I mean, when I got the ticket. Mm-hmm. I could have, I could have let it just, you know, I could have been down. I, I could have um, stopped singing. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. um, and I said, no, I'm happy. The ticket really doesn't change that. Okay, it means I may have to go to driving school. Mm-hmm. It means I may have to pay some money. So what? It's, you know, what is what is more valuable? My mood and and science has found that when we're upset when we're stressed Mm -hmm. it is not healthy so what is healthier for me to um, not let it ruin my day and and not be stressed out or totally being stressed out you know because i have to spend some money or some time uh related to driving it sounds like you always a choice Right. It sounds like you didn't focus on the problem. You focused on the solution of what you wanted to experience. That's what it sounds like. Right. And, and you know, in my life, what I found, yes, there's always the negative stuff. I mean, particularly if you listen to the news these days. Yes. There's always that negative stuff going around. Yes. But there's also the positive. You know, right now we're going through pandemic. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, people are dying. Yes, people are ill, and that's you know sad. Mm-hmm. 
but there's also other things around. I mean, every day, my daughter, and even though she lives in the same city, my daughter and I speak on the phone at mm -hmm. five o'clock every single day since last March we've mm -hmm. been doing this. Mm -hmm. Such a joy, you know. Um, it's gotten me into the garden more than I've ever been before. Wow, that's beautiful. Um, you know, there's certain things. It's gotten me to to um, send notes and, and appreciation notes or emails to other people. Uh, you know, checking in with them, making sure they're okay. So it's it's bonded me or, or you know, helped me be closer to other people. Mm -hmm. There's so many things we can focus on that are positive. Yes. Rather than negative, and it's our choice. So if if people were more uh, focused and more thankful, you think they would just have a better attitude altogether, right? Well, I find gratitude, being, you know, grateful mm -hmm. helps me to be more positive. And I also found, and this is, I find very interesting, but the more I am grateful for the things in my life, yes, the more things in my life to be grateful for come into it. Yes, I believe that. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So I can focus on uh, things, to, even in the negative. Yes. I find I try to be grateful because often it teaches me a lesson that may I may not have learned otherwise, even in those negative times. Yes, yes. So let me ask you this. Um, when something major happens in your life, in that moment, you just talk to yourself, or is it a certain technique that you use so that you can just align yourself with the right thoughts? Well, I'm human, so I don't always do that immediately, <laughs> but I try. Right, right, right. I think I'm much better than I used to be because mm -hmm. I practice this. Yes. But I look out, you know, changing my attitude. What, what can I find positive in this situation? That's awesome. You know, yeah. just that simple question. What is positive about this situation? There's a, there's a Zen uh, poem that I like. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. It says, now that my house is burnt down, mm -hmm. I could see the moon better. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so. Um, I don't know. God forbid if my house burned down. If I <laughs> focus on the moon. But yes. It's just a way of remembering to mm -hmm. um, stay positive and that there's always something to be grateful for and thankful for, even in the negative. I mean, I did not want my wife to pass away. Right. But who would have thought before she passed away that I would be a national speaker, um, that I would have so many books inspirational books helping people all over the world mm -hmm. you know i would have never imagined that so even out of that mm -hmm. negative tragic stuff mm -hmm. came positive and uplifting you know and inspirational for so many other people so what do you do when you have a negative emotion because you can you can have a positive thought or uh, you could be in the middle of something happening and you like you say you're human and you're going to feel things. And so you can have a positive thought. So what what happens or what do you do? I should ask um, when you have a negative emotion and you you're trying to fight against that. What do you do? I scream and yell and cry. <laughs> <laughs> of course, we all do. Get it out, right? You gotta get it and out. Then I get over it. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe I curse, you know, <laughs> if no one's around. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I I try to um I try to just focus more. You know, if I have a negative emotion, I try to focus more. And of course, you know, like I was saying to you earlier, I pray a lot, but um, I try to focus more. But let me let me ask you something else, because I want to talk to you about the power of intention. But before I get to that, I want to ask you about um, another book, because I, I love the titles of your books. I'm going to check them out. So listeners, please check out his books. Um they are really, really good. And so I want to ask you about um, embracing life after loss. Tell me about that. 
Right. So when my wife was dying, I, after she died, I looked at grief books mm -hmm. and often they were big, fat, you know, two, three hundred pages. And I was in no position to sit down and read all that. But when I did read parts of it, it would often tell me about all the terrible things I'm going to experience in my grief. I, I won't be eating, perhaps, uh, feel like eating. I'll lose sleep, you know, um, I'll be depressed. Uh, oh, and I thought, who needs a book like that <laughs> when, you're, when you're grieving? I yeah. need something uh, uplifting. I yes. need something motivational. And so I wrote Embracing Life After Loss, mm -hmm. which is very simple. I go through five stages of going from loss to laughter. Awesome. And each section has like one little quote, inspirational, uplifting quote that's from somebody else. Mm -hmm. And then I have maybe a half a page, maybe a page of my thoughts on that and what I did or how I, how I um, applied that in my, in my grief. Okay. So it's, a, it's almost a book you could open if you're not doing well, any page mm -hmm. in the book. Mm -hmm. and hopefully it will help you um, get through it. And, and I know people have told me, I have a, a friend whose son was killed in the war, mm -hmm. and uh, she told me how much this book helped her. Wow. That's awesome, you know, to um, have techniques and ways to just continue to get better that's what we, that's what we all have to do we have to work on ourselves and we have to get through the tests and trials of life because things happen and like you said um alan you know um, we're in the middle of a pandemic and a lot of things has happened but we can still um conquer and 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 just push through these things that we're going yeah, through and I, I as a writer i believe words are so powerful yes you know, you asked a little while ago about what people can do when they're really emotionally upset. Mm -hmm. Have an affirmation around some yes. words that can, can lift you up. Yes. Or open a book like this or another book that you, you know, that you like that you know will lift you up. Or have a photo of, uh, I have a photo of my daughter around when she was a teenager mm -hmm. and up to that time of this photo, she wanted to have a cream pie thrown in her face. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a kid, they want... And so she was getting off the camp bus one year, and I threw her a cream pie in her face. Oh, wow. And the, the joy on her face in this photo is so inspiring. Oh, wow. So when I'm down, it, you know, I look at that photo, and it changes my emotion. That's beautiful. So have something around that you know will help you get through that period. Awesome. So talk to me about the power of intention, because you mentioned to me a couple of days ago, um, manifesting is a key factor when it comes to intentions. You mentioned that to me. Right. So th this is very interesting to me because, um, at the beginning of the year, I always put down uh, on my bucket list some of the things I would like to accomplish. Mm -hmm. So a couple of years ago, I wrote down uh, beginning of the year, I would love to do a TED Talk. Mm -hmm. But that was January 5th. Mm -hmm. On January 25th, I get an unsolicited email from a group, it was actually a high school group that does, uh, puts on TED Talks every year. Mm -hmm. And they asked me if I would like to do a TED Talk. Okay. 20 days later, <laughs> okay. I had put my intentions down and all of a sudden it happened. Wow. Um, so they wanted me to do my therapeutic humor talk. Mm -hmm. I could have done that easily, but I was really at that time, I don't know, I was really interested in how we create things in our life and our life in general. Yes. And I look back over my life and I realize I've created a lot of stuff that I've imagined and then created it, just imagine my head and then created it. 
And how did I do it? So I just put together this talk about uh, harnessing the power of intention. And um, that was that was my TEDx talk, and people can see it. It's now gotten, I don't know, 115,000 views. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, amazing. But, but it was for high school students, and I thought they really needed, you know, they're going to go on to college, and mm-hmm. they're probably going to be upset at things that don't happen. And I wanted to give them some hope and inspiration and... One of the things I like to do is give people tools and tips of how to accomplish something. So I was really wanting to give them some ideas of how to create the life they want. Yes. And so I put this speech together for them. So how does that align with faith? Because before we started this episode, we were talking about prayer. You talked to me a little bit about your church. And so how does that uh topic align with faith having faith because we have to have faith yeah well when you have faith you have belief yes Mm -hmm. and so this is very much aligned with that um yeah i don't it's interesting it's like when i talked about to audiences about therapeutic humor yes um i don't i don't like um I don't like put it in a, uh, what am I trying to say? I don't like putting it in kind of a scientific thing, Mm -hmm. although it's all based on science. You know, I want it to be lighter. I want it to be uh, tuned to what they might might draw them. Okay. So, So like in my therapeutic humor workshops, I talk about my wife dying, and it gets a lot of people start crying. Oh, wow. But I'm talking about humor, and so I bring them back to humor. But, uh, you know, what I'm saying, I guess what I'm saying is I'm talking about serious subjects. Yes. But I put it in a lighter, understandable way. So I might be talking about faith. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. But I don't say that. I understand. (laughs) Because some people might not, not tune in then. Yeah, I understand. Um, Wording is very important when it comes to um, a public audience because some people understand certain things a certain way, I should say. So I I, I totally understand what what you're talking about. But imagination. I was recently um, watching something on YouTube. I think his name was Goddard Neville. And... um, That was very interesting to me. So the imagination, how to create the life you want to see. And as I was listening, it did align with faith because um, you're basically creating the life that you want to see and experience by according to what you believe. So for yourself personally, Alan, um, would you say that all aligns with faith? Because, you know, you are a man of faith. Right. Yes, oh, definitely. And in fact, my latest book, uh, The Awe, A-W-E Factor, mm-hmm. when I was writing that book, I had a meeting with my former literary agent, and mm-hmm. he said, oh, you're writing a book on all What is all? Oh, wow. And I gave him some answer, but it, well, I didn't feel good about the answer, and I start researching it. And um, so... After doing all this research, and by the end of the book, I realized that awe was the presence of the divine. Mm -hmm. That when we see something as awe, wonder in the world, Mm -hmm. we are seeing what the divine has created. Um, So, so again, um, back back to faith and and um, Mm -hmm. and intention. I realized I knew we were going to talk about this, so I actually listened to my talk again, my Mm -hmm. TED talk, (laughs) Um, and I realized I don't have this in the TED talk, but it really should have been, that, and again, this actually goes with faith too, but uh, it's, uh, I don't know if you've heard this expression, but when you want to create something for yourself, Mm -hmm. There's three words uh, you can you can use, and that is be, mm-hmm. do, and have. B e d o and h a v. And because 
like um, if if you want to be a ballet dancer, yes. So you walk like a ballet dancer. You tell people, you know, you're going to be a ballet dancer. Mm-hmm. You um, act like a ballet dancer. You know, you go to see ballets. You hang around with other ballet dancers. So you you are in a, in other words, you already are a ballet dancer even before you're a ballet dancer for real. <laughs> yeah, that. Um, that that sounds yeah. like um the two is two scriptures that goes with that that comes to my mind for myself personally call those things that be not as they are and now faith because it's operating in the now would you say about right. that that does that match yeah so if you're you know talking about faith if you believe if you be mm-hmm. that you're going to be a ballet dancer you have the faith that you're going to be it yes and then do so. Then you have to take ballet dance lessons. You know, you you have to work on it. Yes. You can't just have it in your mind and say, "I'm a ballet dancer." That's not going to work. You have to practice. You have to study. And then what happens? Then you have it. Then you're in a ballet company and you actually dance. And so that's a way of creating. I didn't talk about it in the TED talk about creating, but. Just those words, it's good to remember to be, do, and have. That sounds good. And I, for my own life, and this is in the TED Talk, um, when I went to grade school, uh, my parents took me, to, we lived in New York City, my parents took me to see my first Broadway show, Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. And... Um, I sat so well after that in that show that my parents two weeks later took me to see another Broadway show. And when I went back to school, you know, teachers asked, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I said, I want to be a scenic designer. Mm-hmm. And a number of teachers didn't even know what that was. And I had to explain it was the person who makes those pretty pictures on stage. So instead of doing a book report, Again, this is like be the B part. Yes. I would take a shoebox and I would make a, a scene, a diorama a scene from the book we were reading mm-hmm. instead of a book report. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I'll, you see, already in the seventh grade, or when I was seven years old, I was a scenic designer. I was making those little scenes in a box, mm-hmm. which was like a stage. Mm-hmm. So that was like my my B. Mm -hmm. And then um, I went to Yale Drama School. It was a three-year master's. Mm -hmm. I was kicked out after the first year. I was told (laughs) basically I had no talent. Oh, wow. I know. And here, but see, here's the other thing. They could not tell me I wasn't a scenic designer. Because you believed it. Because I believed it. In my head, I already was. Mm. That's and awesome. so I went back to New York City. Mm-hmm. I got into the scene design union as an apprentice. Mm-hmm. And then I took a very stringent test. You know, I studied, uh, again, the do part. I studied, took a very stringent test to be in the union. I failed the first time, studied for another year. They only give it once a year, and I passed. And I, that's, now I have the have. I was a designer hired by CBS. Yes. And did shows like Captain Kangaroo, Murray Griffin, Jackie Gleason. Mm-hmm. Um, but the fact is, I realized nobody could tell me that I couldn't do what I wanted to do. So I had my intention out there mm-hmm. at seven years old that I knew what I wanted to be. And nobody, nobody could tell me I could not do it because that was my intention. That's beautiful. And finally it happened. There you go, listeners. You heard them. Create the life you want to see, be, do, and have. And your system of belief is going to take you right there. Right? You said it. Uh, yes. Now, a lot of people give up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, it, it didn't happen in a year. They give up. Um or they keep trying and it finally happens. But And it has to be, I believe sometimes people go, well, Allie, you told me, you know, this is one of the steps you've got to do to 
to uh, to harness your power of intention. And I've been doing this, and it hasn't happened. Well, I think this is where faith comes in. Absolutely, yes. Um, because it may not be the right time for that to happen. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, you may not be in the right space for that to happen. So I think there's a higher power that yes. whatever you call it, God, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. Mohammed, mm-hmm. Jesus, Buddha, Moses, mm-hmm. <laughs> whatever you want to call it, or don't even give it a name, but there's a high, there's some power, some yes. energy that uh, is either right for you at the time or not right. And maybe, yes, that you'll get what you want, but maybe not when you think you should have it. Maybe in two years, maybe in six months. You know, you, the thing is, you just have to put that energy out there and then let the universe create it for you. Absolutely. I believe that for myself personally, because, um, those three words you mentioned, be, do, and have, I have done that. I have saw myself seeing, doing something. And, um, and then, like I said, you know, it, it happened right in front of me. I always use the word projection. You know, if you project something good, it can happen. And I just believe uh-huh. that. Uh, talk to me about um, having the right thoughts with your intention, because I, I believe that we should practice consistently maintaining the right thoughts because you talked about that earlier um and i just wanted to get into um the importance of maintaining the right thoughts well in the tedx talk i do show the audience five ways of harnessing a power of intention Mm -hmm. and part of that is the right thoughts in fact the number one way is to be very clear on what you want Mm -hmm. And so that involves having the right thoughts, having focused thoughts. Yes. So I'm living in New York City with my wife. She was from California. We would travel here once a year. We kept saying we want to move there someday. We'd love a Victorian house. And so I'm in New York City and I'm drawing pictures of Victorian houses. Wow. Often it's called a vision board. Mm -hmm. Again, be very clear in your thoughts. And drawing pictures of Victorian houses, not even living in San Francisco to get one, Mm -hmm. but thinking someday I want one. And there was a fire in our building one night, and the landlord came by the next day and offered us a bunch of money. And my wife and I said, okay, let's take the money and run. We always wanted to live in San Francisco. Let's move there. Mm -hmm. Within a year, we got a Victorian house. Beautiful. Um, And I think part of it was because it was very clear of Mm -hmm. what I wanted, what we wanted. Yes. And not only that, but here's the second way is, one, be very clear, but put it on paper. Mm-hmm. Because just having a thought in your head is only one step. Yes. To man to manifesting what you want, mm-hmm. putting it down on paper, writing it uh, as a story or a sentence or whatever you want, or a picture, drawing a picture, or cutting out pictures of a magazine of whatever you want, mm-hmm. and creating that vision board is so powerful. It just helps you see what you want. Mm-hmm in addition to thinking about what you want. So that's the the very next step is put it on paper. And then we've already talked about this one is don't have a schedule of when this is going to happen. Yes. Mm -hmm. Leave it up to the universe. Yes. And four, we've talked about, you've got to act on it. So, you know, I could move to San Francisco and never contact a real estate agent. Um, but just hoping a, a Victorian house would come in my life may not happen. Mm-hmm. So I had to get a real estate agent or I had to look at what neighborhood I wanted. Or, mm-hmm. You know, I had to act on it. Yes. And then the fifth thing is to lighten up because and we really haven't talked much about this, but I believe when we're struggling too much, mm-hmm. we're putting out negative energy. Mm, wow. Um, and it's, it's 
it's harder or maybe almost impossible if you're surrounding yourself with negative energy. Yes. Negative people are going to be drawn to that and mm. uh, negative thoughts are going to be drawn to that. Mm -hmm. So the fifth thing is lighten up, put, put your energy out in the world of what you want, lighten up and let the world supply you with that when the time is right. That's awesome. And lastly, I want to uh, ask you about the power of words, because having the right thoughts, having the right intentions, and that, and like you said, using the three uh, the three words, be, do, and have, we also have to use the right words. So talk to me about that so that the listeners can understand words are powerful. Oh, my God. So I so believe in that. Of course, as an author, I probably have to. But <laughs> I love affirmations. I love positive thoughts. So I'm looking at one that I have on my wall right here for my new book that mm -hmm. just came out a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. I am grateful for the awe factor, the name of the book, the awe factor being a New York Times bestselling book. Awesome. So I'm all I'm already being grateful, even though it hasn't happened mm. for that. But one of my favorite Wow and you can use it, I'll let your listeners use it, it's not copyright. One affirmation I use all the time and so many things have come to me because of that mm -hmm. is the world treats me as royalty wherever I go. That's awesome, Alan. Thank you so much for um just talking to me during this uh, episode. It's, it's, it's awesome, everything you mentioned, and we need to be inspired. We need to be encouraged every day. We need to wake up with a, uh, a clear view, as you said, be very clear, and we need to have a precise focus on the things that we want to see in our life. And um, listeners, you can uh, purchase his books. Where, where can we find your books, Alan? Well, Mom, the easiest is online at Amazon or Barnes and Noble, any any of those online bookstores, or your favorite bookstore could order any of my books. Um, they just have to spell my name right, Shrey, because it's several spellings. So it's <laughs> A L L E N K L E I N. Okay, listeners, you have to spell his name right, and uh, the books that I was checking out is uh, The Healing Power of Humor, You Can't Ruin My Day, and Embracing Life After Loss. And um, how can the listeners um, reach out to you, Alan? So best way is um, go to my website. Lots of uh, in interesting stuff there. Okay. And it is www.alankline.com. And again, it's A-L-L-E-N-K-L-E-I-N.com. All right, listeners, make sure you support his mission because he is all about encouragement and motivation. He is a speaker, author, and it's all about positivity. So listeners, I thank you for listening to SB Favor Thinking Podcast. If you need to reach me, you can reach me at sbfavor at yahoo.com via email. You can also find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at SB Favor. I also have a YouTube channel. You can click like, leave me some feedback, and um, click the bell so that you can receive a notification each time there is a new episode of SB Favor Thinking Podcast. Thank you for listening, and please share the podcast with others. Please make sure you have a safe weekend and you have a good day.